Hi everyone, Brittany here from By Brittany Goldwyn, a blog about DIY and houseplants. Today I have another care video for you for another one of my favorite houseplants, and that is the Hoya Carnosa Compacta. The Hoya Carnosa Compacta is also called the Hoya Rope Plant, or just the Rope Plant, because the leaves and the stems look like long trailing ropes. And as you can see, it's pretty obvious why it's one of my favorite houseplants. I just love the way this one looks. So first I'm going to be talking about the basics of how to care for this plant, light, water, and soil. Then I'll touch on temperature and humidity. I'll go over some things like flowering and propagation, and then we'll wrap up with where you can find this houseplant. So first let's talk about light for this plant. So I have all of my different Hoya ropes here gathered just for this video, but I really usually have them dispersed around my house. So this little variegated version of the Hoya rope plant, I have right in a window that gets pretty bright sun late morning through the early evening. So this is definitely a plant that likes bright indirect light. This one is hanging in a window that gets about the same amount of light. And then this one is a little bit farther away from that same window. So they're probably, I'd say, within one to three feet away from a window that gets very bright indirect light all day. You definitely don't want to give this plant too much direct sun because that will burn the leaves. A lot of Hoyas can sun stress a little bit, and this is a variety that can sun stress a bit, but it's not really a look that I particularly like, and I don't want to risk burning the leaves, so I just have it in bright indirect light. So for watering the Hoya rope plant, I actually have these in plastic nursery pots inside of this pod. So I take them out and I put them in the sink and you can see it has plenty of drainage holes on the bottom here. I take them out and put them in the sink or the shower and I hose them down thoroughly um, to completely soak the soil to let the so to let the water drain all the way through the soil. Um, this makes sure you give it a nice deep drink and then I wait until the soil has almost completely dried out before watering the plant again. I know some people say with this plant, they only let the top few inches dry out, but I found that that's actually a little bit too much water for my plants and the conditions I have them in. So I really pretty much ignore these plants along with the rest of my Hoyas. Um, I wait until the leaves just start wrinkling a tiny bit and then I give it a thorough drink. One thing to keep in mind when you're watering these plants is with the way the leaves grow, they can be real magnets for dust and other just random things in your house. So when I water them, I like to thoroughly rinse down all of the foliage and then kind of shake it dry to get the excess water out before I put the plant back. Now I mentioned that this plant soil likes to dry out between watering sessions. Um, and one good way to do that is to ensure that you're using a well draining soil mix. Really honestly, any soil mix from a local garden store that's labeled indoor soil or potting so houseplant potting soil will work just fine. Um, I typically throw in a little bit of extra like coconut husks or um, a little bit of perlite or maybe even some bark, just depending on what the mixture I have is and how dense it is when it comes out of the bag. Um, when you use a well draining mix, it definitely helps facilitate the drainage when you water the plant so that it isn't retaining too much moisture, but it also helps with oxygen flow to the roots. All Hoyas are tropical plants, so they do well in a variety of normal household temperatures and humidity levels. That said, they really, really like warmer temperatures, so I like to take a lot of my Hoyas outside and either put them under a dense tree or in the shade or a covered patio, just somewhere where they're not getting that direct sunlight so they can soak up all of the warm temperatures where I live. You definitely wanna bring this one inside though if you have all four seasons because it is not cold or frost hardy. As for humidity, um, it's definitely a humidity lover, but I have actually found that this one does really great in our average household humidity. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to humidifiers. I've never had these in areas where I've had humidifiers running consistently, and they have grown really great as you can see here. So let's cover pruning and propagation next. So I have propagated many Hoyas, including Hoya rope plants. I have not yet propagated my variegated variety of the Hoya rope plant, but I have chopped this one specifically quite a few times to make propagations. So I'll show you all some close-up shots in, the, um, in some photos in the frame here, but basically you just wanna look for a spot on the stem that has already some exposed growth points. So you'll find over the course of your rope plant that it will naturally lose some leaves maybe you might overwater it sometimes maybe it comes that way but to me those are perfect spots to prune and propagate 
um, because you want to be encouraging full bushy growth on your Hoya Rope plant and pruning is a great way to do that. But if you can propagate the cutting when you take it, that's also great. I really like to use damp sphagnum moss and perlite for my Hoya propagations, but I've also started using LECA a little bit more. Um, I don't typically like to use water for them just because I find they suffer a little bit more transplant shock when I put them into soil, but it definitely is a viable option. Just be you know, mindful of the fact that when you transfer them to soil, they might not be happy or look very good for a little bit um, and they might drop some leaves. So um, next I wanna talk about flowering because when you are pruning your Hoya plant, you want to make sure that you're not pruning off any of the peduncles, which are the flower growth points. So I'll show you a close up shot again of what these look like. None of my Hoya plants here are currently in bloom. Um, out of my three Hoyas here, this big one in the middle is the only one that has bloomed. These have not yet bloomed. I've not seen any signs of peduncles growing on them, um, but this one has bloomed like crazy. So I'll drop a few pictures in there of the last time it bloomed. The blooms smell like chocolate. They really do. And they're pink and they're gorgeous. And I absolutely love them. Um, when you make sh when you ha do have your Hoya flower, you can let the flower petals shrivel up and die off naturally, but you do not want to cut off the growth point because that is where the flowers will continue sprouting from in the future. They will continue to bloom over and over and over as long as your Hoya is happy. Uh, one of the ways you can help encourage blooming is by giving it plenty of bright indirect light. They definitely need light to flower. And I also heard last year from someone um, who I follow on TikTok, who I really like, um, I'll put her handle up here too, in case you're interested. She, um, she mentioned that she withholds water from her Hoyas in early spring for a little bit longer than she might usually, and that that helps force blooms. I'm not sure if there's science behind that, but I decided to do it this year. And this one in the middle here probably had like, a total of 15 to 20 blooms over the course of a month and a half. It was incredible. So maybe try that if you're having a hard time getting yours to flower, it might work. Now, as far as where to find these plants, um, the variegated versions I would say are a little bit harder to find. I got this one from a nursery called Plants Alive in Silver Spring, Maryland. It was a birthday treat to myself last year. Um, they have an amazing selection of rare and common plants. I would definitely recommend the trip if you're anywhere around the DC metro area. Um, and this one has grown, it's been really happy despite being variegated um, and a bit slower of a grower than the regular Hoya rope plants, the non-variegated version. The non-variegated versions are a little bit easier to find, but I would say they're still not popping up every other day in you know, your Home Depot and Lowe's garden centers. Most nurseries that have at least somewhat of a decent specialty supply in house plants will probably have Hoya rope plants at some point, um, but if not, you can ask them and see if they can order them for you, or you can look on Etsy. I've ordered plenty of Hoyas on Etsy that I have not been able to find locally. And as long as you read the reviews, I've never had a bad experience. Um, that said, I do have a friend who found a huge Goya, gorgeous Hoya rope plant in um, a Home Depot of all places. It was the only one there and she just happened to see it while she was running by and we have not seen one since and that was about two years ago. So although the big growers do make them, they are definitely not as common. These are much slower growing plants. So um, that definitely speaks to why there's probably a little bit lower of a supply out there despite being somewhat of a high demand for this plant. And just a quick note for the pet owners, this one is pet safe. All Hoyas that I'm aware of are non-toxic if ingested. That said, I still don't recommend letting your kids or pets or anyone ingest any houseplants since they are meant for ornamental use. Um, luckily, my, my cats aren't really tempted by these thick leaves here. Um, as you can see, they pretty much ignore them when I put them in their face. Um, but they are safe to have around if you have pets that have a nibble on your plants. All right, so that's an overview of my Hoya Carnosa Compacta or Hoya Rope Plant Care Routine that I have followed for the last several years to get my ropes looking amazing. This is one of my favorite plants. Every time someone comes over, even if they're not a plant person, they always comment on these plants just because it has such a unique growth pattern. And when they get long and trailing, they just look absolutely stunning. They look great hanging in windows too. They're like a natural curtain, it's amazing. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe so that you can see my future care videos. And I also have an in-depth post on my blog, bybrittanygoldwin.com about the Hoya rope plant and a bunch of other plants that I write about. I write about 
pretty much every plant that I've cared for. So uh, until next time, happy planting.